All right, hello everyone. It's Q here. Welcome back to Driven to Failure. Today's a big day. We're going to start doing the manual five-speed swap on the 1998 Z3 with the 2.8 liter motor. Uh, here's what we're going to be doing, kind of a rough game plan. This is going to be the A4S 270R transmission converted to a ZF S5 Delta 310Z. Um, here's where I'm going to kind of start. Uh, obviously, you're going to have to get the whole transmission out, so that's the first step. Removing current transmission, that comes out along with a few other things like removing the exhaust, uh, there's some heat shielding, drive shaft, and a cross member. So I've already went ahead, jacked up the car, and that is all soaking in some WD uh, penetrant to help loosen things up. Hopefully I don't break too many things. I'm expecting to break probably about 80% of the exhaust bolts off, but in preparation of that I already have new flange. Uh, gaskets and everything for the exhaust system and I'll just go get some hardware from the ace down the road. After that I'm going to go ahead and tackle the pedal box and the wiring. So for the pedal box you can take the, the automatic brake pedal box off and you can transplant the clutch system onto that or uh, as I did I just pulled the entire system out of the car that I found at the salvage yard and it should just pop right in reconnect the cylinder for the brake and then route the housing and the, the master cylinder for the clutch. Uh, with that there's also two switches that we're going to wire. First off is going to be the clutch interrupt switch and then we have the reverse light switch. Uh, for which that I grabbed the, the harness off of the car in the salvage yard so I do have some wire and a plug to go along with that as well for the clutch interrupt. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and plumb the hydraulics. There's gonna be a hydraulic line that comes off your brake reservoir. That goes down to the master cylinder on the clutch box, or the, sorry, the pedal box. From there, there's hard lines that go down underneath the car and into the slave cylinder. <coughs> Hopefully there's bracketry for that already provisioned in the body. There usually is, that's something that they just kinda, of, they build all the cars the same and they just kinda of put whatever components are on um, for that build. So after that, we're gonna go into the new trans install. With that, basically, just reverse. I'm uh, gonna get the transmission back up in there. But before that, we gotta put the flywheel and the clutch assembly, or the clutch pack assembly in there. And then we can go ahead and button up the drivetrain with the drive shaft, cross members, and heat shields, exhaust. After that, I'm going to go after coating the TCM out of the car. So each car uh, with, in this generation, um, they have all these control modules that kind of talk to each other through a system called CAN bus. And there's uh, one or two control modules in the vehicle that typically carry the code for the vehicle, which defines what it was built as uh, five speed versus automatic or, you know, numerous other options, different like door lock features or whatever. Whatever that, that build is, is coded into those two control modules. So I should be able to pull the code for this vehicle out of either the instrument cluster or the security system cluster or uh, module. Recode it for a manual transmission, send it back to that control module, and I think send it to the engine control module. I don't remember exactly. I think it's the engine control module. Um, to identify the car as a manual transmission. With that, then the engine transmission, or sorry, engine control module has calibrations for both automatic and five speed uh, configurations. So if I code the correct type of transmission configuration to the powertrain control module, it'll then think it's a manual and it'll use the reference tables for the manual transmission uh, engine calibration and then that with that I should be able to disconnect the transmission control module and everything should be happy without any sort of error codes or lights or anything like that illuminated in the dash and then of course after that we'll just go ahead and drive it to failure uh, before I begin uh, with the actual removal I'm going to go through a couple things uh, that I refurbished along the way so at this moment I'll go ahead and grab your steel toes and since this is a bigger job, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and put the uh, safety roll bars down on this. 
can never be too safe. Bam, all right, ready to go. Uh, a couple other things I learned along the way when I was refurbing a few components. These masks, I got a few parts laying around. All right, the Guibo on the ZF five speed is different than the automatic and the Gitrag five speed. There's a difference in overall diameter, uh, as you can see here. The ZF five speed has a 130 millimeters diameter Guibo. And I want to say this was 110, maybe it was 97, something like that. Anyway, different. I learned that um, as I was going through and replacing all these parts. Uh, I've also got new throw up bearing. I am going to go ahead and replace the pivot pin. You can see it in there. This one is brass. The stock one that was in there was plastic. And it was in pretty rough shape. So hopefully that gets a bit more longevity out of it. And then moving on to the drive shaft. Um, I did get a new center support bearing. So that's pressed on. I've got a new sleeve collar, locking collar, with a new rubber bushing. And that'll lock the, the length in place once it's set in the vehicle. And then this front support bushing. I had a heck of a time getting that out actually. Uh, I don't think I have the old one laying around. But I ended up using a bearing puller. And with the inside of this being rubber, I was having a lot of trouble with it just flexing and letting the puller go. So what I ended up doing was using some pitch oil, some heat, and I also cut out the rubber portion of this support bearing or bushing. And that allowed me to get a good grip on the metal in the back side of this and pull it out. And then uh, just a note in the manual. You can see there's a little lip there, so you're not pressing that all the way in. It's protruding approximately four and a half millimeters. So I just used my calipers and made a reference line all the way around and just lightly tapped it in until it was flush with that line. All right, clutch assembly. Oh, I did also disassemble the master cylinder. Uh, you can take this collar right here, kind of squeeze that and it'll come out. You can get that whole plunger assembly out of there. I did that and sprayed the whole thing down with brake cleaner. There was a bit of crud buildup in there. Um, I don't know if that's normal for a vehicle that's been in, in regular use, but this may have just been from the, the car sitting in the salvage yard uh, in the weather. And it was disconnected and stuff from the, the slave cylinder. So that may just be a me issue and not you. All right, so. What else do I got? I've got the cross member. Transmission cross member, that was different. I've got a new shifter link bushing for the transmission side. And then the shifter linkage. And then I've got replacement uh, transmission support bushings that go on the cross member. I do also have new flywheel bolts. All right. I think that about does it for all the parts that I refurbished and kind of went through and what I'm replacing. So, so the first step here, like I said, I already got it jacked up. Um, I've got ramps in the front, and then I've got those well, called jack stands in the back. And what I measured was with those on the highest setting, I've got about 16 inches of clearance on the rear subframe. So I'm hoping with this scissor transmission jack I got, I can get that low enough to slide it out the back of the car. Um, so I did measure the height of the housing, uh, and that's roughly 15 inches. I'm guessing the automatic is going to be a little bit bigger because it has an extra valve body and, and oil pan and stuff on the bottom of it so it may be a little taller so I may just be able to get it at least down out of the car and then maybe roll it onto some wood and then we'll finagle it out that way. I don't really know how that's gonna go but this is the life of not having a car lift 
Anyway, I'm going to tackle it anyhow. Uh, it's not going to deter me. Stay positive. All right, like I said, everything is already soaking in penetrating oil. Now the first thing I'm going to do is going to get the transmission fluid of the automatic drained because you're going to also have to re uh, disconnect the transmission cooler lines, fluid cooler lines, so you want to get as much out of there as you can. There's going to be some residual left, obviously, in the lines and in the torque converter, so I'm going to do my best not to spill that all over the place. Uh, I should probably lay down some cardboard now that I'm thinking of it. Anyway, and then after that, I'll go after the, the muffler and the exhaust all the way up to the headers. I'm going to try and remove that either via socket and wrench or sawzall. We'll see how that goes. <clears throat> and then, yeah, we'll just kind of go from there. So just stay tuned. Alright, transmission is draining. If you haven't watched my other video on uh, changing the automatic transmission fluid, then the drain plug there is a 19 millimeter. So next we're going to go after these exhaust studs. Now the expectation is that I break these off, so if it goes differently than that, then that can only be better. like that's a 13 millimeter Huh. Hard to say. I think it's still I think it's actually coming loose. Well, damn. Well, there's the 20% that I wasn't going to break, so expect the rest of these to bust right off. If I can even get a hold of these damn things. Oh, that's pretty loose, actually. Another marvel of working on a southern car. Two for two in disconnecting the exhaust. Alright, so now I just have two rubber carriers there on the back, or three, is it? I don't remember. Either way, pop those out. I should be able to get this rear section off, and then I can go ahead and try breaking those manifold bolts off.
that over a few more times. Now I know they make a tool for this, but why well, make things too easy? Alright, the easiest way to do this next step is probably just leave the O2 sensors in the in the pipe and just connect the cable. Wherever that may be. Looks like got this one right here. I guess I should probably see if you guys can even see this. You can see the whole underside, huh? Okay. That'll work. Let me shine a little light down here. Looks like you just gotta squeeze the two sides. Since I got weak fingers, let's go ahead and use the channel lock for that. So get a small screwdriver and try to pry those little tabs. Sensors disconnected, so now I can go to the front where this mid pipe connects to the manifolds. And there's six nuts and bolts up there on two separate flanges. What's the chances those are the same size? 13. Let's get the extension out and find out. I mean, 
What are you doing all the way back there? Can't expect you to see anything. Here's the lower one, and the other one's just above it. Looks like they're bigger. There's my sack of wrench. And they are. Let's see, what do you think? 15? Deep well, come on. Let's see if 15 fits. No. Nope. Looks like it's a 17. One of these things. Get that one out of the way. Right. You shitting me? That's a different one? Come on. <laughs> What's on this one? That's, it. That's definitely the wrong one. <laughs> I think it's a fifteen. Is that a fifteen? So it's a fifteen and a seventeen. Yep, that's a fifteen. So it looks like I got a mixed bag of stuff here. Never fails to entertain. Feels like it's got a little play in still. Ooh, it's a 14. Need to get a little more oomph on there. Alright, you're probably not going to believe this. I barely do, and I'm the one standing here. Uh, so I was able to get both sections of the exhaust pipe off without breaking any bolts. Mid pipe. Or to the manifold. I did, however, end up having to take the front support or reinforcement X brace off the front. Uh, I just couldn't slip past the uh, the exhaust past that with it installed. So with that, on to the next, the exhaust shield. All right, for the exhaust shield. Looks like there is a couple pieces under here, three maybe. 
Looks like we probably only need to take this center section out the back side and can leave these two up. Um, they look like they're 10 millimeter. Let's see if we can do it. Smarter, not harder. Nope. The screws are a little bit long for this little socket. Looks like I'm gonna have to go deep well and then just crack them all loose. So I did end up getting the dust shield off, or heat shield, it was uh, just some 10 millimeters around the, uh, the tunnel one, and then I did take the passenger side off uh, as it was covering up the rear transmission cross member mounting bolts. So now we're going to take the drive shaft out, uh, so you got the center carrier, the mount to the rear diff, and then to the front, uh, the guibo. So it looks like it was 18 millimeter, which is kind of a weird size. I think I had to go special buy this at some point in the past. And it's hard to get anything on the front side, so I'm gonna probably use uh, an adjustable wrench on the front. And then we'll see if we can just get this front side off or torque it from the bolt side. Now you only have to take three of these off. Um, you choose which three, whether it's the transmission side or the drive shaft side. You only need to remove three. So just alternate as you're going around. Otherwise you're just gonna be doing more work you don't need to be doing in a tight space. Now this is a, this is a locking nut on the uh, transmission side, so it's going to be tough all the way through. So don't don't worry about that. Alright, so it's usually a little bit harder uh, wrenching from the socket head size or from the head bolt side just because you have the shaft going through and it could be seized slightly. So I'm bracing the back side against the, the tunnel here and uh, just pushing with both hands. And that seems to be enough to get it. You can leave the, these bolts in if you so choose, but uh, the front side of the drive shaft has that front support bushing that I was showing you earlier, and that slips onto a nipple on the back side of the, the transmission on the output shaft, so that, that'll hold itself up. You don't need to worry about supporting that, because it's not going to come off unless you pull back on it. <laughs> so I'll just leave one in for good measure, but you don't really need to. Alright, now I'm going to get the differential side and then we can do the center carrier. 
just want to do that while that back end is supported uh, by the center bushing and then that'll rest on the rear subframe and then I'll remove the center bearing or bushing and that should be enough play then you gotta loosen you can loosen this uh, collar right here that'll allow the the half the back half of the shaft to slip into the front side of the shaft compressing it allowing you to clear the rear subframe removing it and then you can pull back and remove the front side of the shaft out of the the output shaft of the transmission it only takes a few turns to loosen this up and then should get a little play in that but it's probably stuck together a little bit just from the nature of things I'm gonna save a couple of these Guibo bolts because I'm gonna be reusing uh, three of them with the other three that I have used. Actually, you know what? I'll probably just use all all six from this car and not use the salvage one. But uh, I intend on taking this transmission and got out back out at some point because I'm gonna be going uh, forced induction, so the the clutch is going to be coming back out at some point for a refresh and upgrade. So I'm not too worried about that at the moment. Alright, looks like this side it's going to be a 16 millimeter. And that should just be bolts in the flange. Yeah, there's nothing for you to hold there, so um, you just need to stabilize the, the drive shaft. Apply the uh, parking brake. See if that's enough to hold it. <sighs> oh, looks like I gotta replace or adjust that as well. All right. Trying to put something in here so I can counter the uh, the torque of this. It's uh, actually the wrong way. Can we do this? Put it back in park. That's what I did. I put it in neutral. Get out and do that every two bolts. Looks like I can get two. Uh. 
It's too loose. I'm gonna rotate it around. Center support. See what size that is. <clears throat> All right, looks like it's a thirteen. So I'll make sure you get your head out of the way here. Leave a couple threads on, but then it'll just drop. Not that it's heavy or anything, but I still don't want to hit it in my face. Next thing will likely be uh, <coughs> um, disconnecting the automatic shifter and then the transmission oil cooler lines. <coughs> Show you what you're working with here. Alright, so this right here, that should be the access hole for the the manual shifter. So once the automatic shifter comes out, this little boot should come out. And then that's where it'll come through the transmission tunnel. And the back side here you can see there's the the bracket that holds the rear bushing for the shifter mechanism. And then it'll slide into the top side of the transmission, the manual transmission when that's installed. So, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go top side, start uh, uh, disassembling the the shifter from the tunnel, and then we'll crack loose the the um, cooling transmission fluid cooling lines. Then I'll come in here with my handy dandy transmission jack. We'll support this. We'll remove the rear uh, transmission cross member. Then we'll attempt to jack up the front side of the engine to kind of tilt everything back and down. That's supposed to give better access to the uh, top transmission mounting bolts. All right, now before we go and do that, let me uh, back pedal a little bit. We do have to unbolt the converter from the flywheel. Now there's an access window up on the passenger side on the front side of the transmission. You just got to rotate it, the engine around and remove the bolts. So actually we'll do that next and then jump into the rest of what I just said. So hang tight. Alright so this is laying underneath the car, feet out the front. On the passenger side looking up you'll see this uh, rubber grommet on the side of where the transmission and engine come together. You pull that back and that there is the back side of the flywheel 
So now you just got to rotate the engine around till a bolt shows up in that. And then uh, loosen that. And that what that'll do is disconnect the torque converter from the flywheel. So when you go to pull the transmission off, uh, the torque converter stays with the transmission. Otherwise, you'll pull the transmission off of the torque converter and you'll just get a bunch of transmission fluid all over the place. So, yeah, we're going to rotate that around and loosen those bolts. Well, take them all the way out. Alright, so this is the driver's side. Uh, side opposite where the transmission drain plug is. We've got the transmission cooler line right here going into the side of it so we're going to remove that. Uh, the shifter linkage sorry, right here on both sides and then uh, we're going to go after the bolts that are around the outside of the transmission there's two different sizes of these uh, Torx bolts, E-Torx. And then we still have to uh, lower the rear cross member so we can get to a couple of the top bolts. Sorry I can't just film all this. There's a lot of stuff that's happening up inside and I only have so many hands. So I'm not really showing everything step by step here. Just I lack hands, and I also just get excited when I continue to move forward. So we took that 13 millimeter bolt out here, and then this bracket right here, we just crack that loose, put a little catch under here just in case there's still some fluid in there, and there is, and then this other one should just pop right out. Quite a bit of fluid still in that, so we'll let it that drain out. All right, here we are. Next day, uh, day two. Going to be looking at getting the shifter removed. It's already disconnected from the transmission side. On the top side, the first thing you want to do is remove the the knob, and that simply just pulls up. Um, if you do it, don't put your face directly over it. You'll probably punch yourself in the face, but just give it a couple good uh, pulls and it'll come right up. After that, you've got this trim piece and that you just pulls straight up. There's some wiring to disconnect for lighting and a button. And then, uh, yeah, after that, it looks like we've got one, two, three bolts holding that down. Now, I'm not sure exactly if I can get this out of here with the center console in place, so we'll see. We'll see how that works. Alright, so I'll go ahead and remove those bolts and see if I can pull that up. I'll probably end up removing this uh, selector cable as well, just to get a little bit of more maneuverability. And then the only other connector is this uh, electrical connector. And then hopefully that just kind of pulls straight up. So, on with that.
All right, and trying to get this shifter out without the center console removal. There's this piece right here, uh, this round cylinder. It's backed up against the stop on the top side of this uh, tunnel, or this uh, center console. So there's two Allen key bolts there and there that I removed. And that looks like it removes the bracket on the top side of that piece. And then that'll also allow me to get the shifter cable off. And then uh, next I'm going to try and scoot the shifter cable back so I can remove the cable from this uh, housing and hopefully just kind of pull that straight up through there. Alright, shifter mechanism is out. I did take some finagling. I've got the back side of the center console lifted just so I could pull this forward enough to remove the component that holds the shifter cable in because it's a solid piece that goes down into the tunnel, integrates with the tunnel. So that is what keeps you from pulling the whole shifter out with the, the console in place. So after I remove that, it right up through the hole, and now there's just this uh, seal carrier, and I should be able to remove that, no problem. On to the next. Alright, got the back end of the transmission supported with the transition or transmission jack. Now we'll go ahead and loosen these cross my bolts and take that down I'm just going to end up taking the cross member off of the transmission as well. That way there's less things hanging off as I try to wiggle this out of here. The ones on top of the transmission lines are 13 millimeter. And it's like those are the body mount, body side bolts as well are 13 millimeter. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it spore in the back, remove this trans jack so I have a little more room to work on a couple of these bolts before I uh, go for the top side. The bolts that hold the transmission to the car or the engine are e torques. So they're basically an inverted Torx bit. And from the bolts that I grabbed with the Salvage yard, we've got a range of them here. I got a 10, 12, and a 14. Hopefully that is enough to cover what we need here. And I also have a bunch of extensions. And hopefully that's everything. Alright, 
Looks like these bottom two, we got some E10s. This is going to be the scary part. This is where I had the trouble getting uh, disconnected from the donor vehicle. Got a lot of play. Oh, it loosens right up. All right. Oops. Next one up, we got. Looks like that's gonna be. That's a uh, fourteen. I believe there's. 10 of these bolts in total around. And there's also a 10 millimeter on the front side where that uh, dust shield next to the access port for the torque converter bolts, there's a 10 millimeter on that shield. I uh, took that off yesterday already. And as I take these out, I'm going to transfer them over to the, the manual transmission housing just so I remember where all the different lengths go. I do believe there is one that is specific to the automatic. It'll just end up being longer and protruding through. So it's not a huge deal to use the one from the automatic. I did, however, grab all the ones I could from the donor vehicle. Alright, as suspected, uh, the transmission jack will not go low enough for me to get the transmission out, so here's what I'm going to do. I propped up the front side, and now I've got the hydraulic jack on the back side of the transmission. I'm going to lift it up a little bit, slide that down, and then the height, top height of the lowest point of the hydraulic jack is going to put the the output flange just about where it needs to be for the oil pan itself to be on the ground. So we'll give this a try. And that's how the ancients do it. Alright. So that's auto out. Manual in. And you can see side by side comparison why you need different cross members and lengths of drive shaft.